I do now. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the seventh annual Plone Symposium. Um, I <laughs> uh, just wanted to say a few words to start things off. Um, I won't, I'll try not to take too long. Um, I'm Kim Nguyen. I'm very glad, very proud to have been part of the team here that's used Plone for 10 years now. And uh, second year to host of hosting the symposium. And so thank you for coming because we have, many of you have come, most of you have come from the United States, but we have people here from Mexico, Brazil, Canada, Argentina, and the Netherlands. And I don't think I missed, yeah. And so it's, uh, it's actually been great to see that we can draw people from outside the United States. It's easy to travel within the US, but it's much harder to come from South America. And Franco, as I joke, always takes about 30 hours to get here. <laughs> He looks, he looks in much better shape this time than the last couple of times I've seen him arrive. Um, the symposium planning team has been phenomenal. Uh, we've been able to do things uh, with such a small group of people, but I'd still like everyone to know who those people are. And so I'm just going to read out names, and if you could just stand up, people can then blame you for anything that goes wrong. <laughs> so that would be Brian. Where's Brian Ledwell? Thank you. Thank you. We got David Hippis from the library. So, yeah. uh, I noticed Luke Scorchio is sitting way at the back of the room. <laughs> uh, we have John Wren. I don't think he's made it here yet this morning. Uh, Carol Gantz from Six Feet Up. Thank you, Carol. Uh, not here from Six Feet Up is Jim Bartek, who was really instrumental in helping us um, do our marketing. Rob Porter, is he here yet? I guess he's uh, on his way here. He asked me, he tweeted me about uh, taxi service. Um, Nathan Van Geem, thank you Nathan. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie Rimpella from, uh, from Wildcard as well. And uh, not here today is Heidi Renke who is also a great help for us. So this group of people uh, made this possible, so thank you very much. Um, our training went swimmingly well. We had five days of Pi Camp training with Chris Calloway, uh, two days of Plone theming with Chrissy Wainwright, and uh, Dr. Curtis Odom's strategic thinking or strategery workshop, uh, which uh, did very well. And so these people have all made this, the event possible. Um, also from our campus, we've had a lot of support from my director, Mark Clements, who's in the audience here. Thank you, Mark. Um, our CIO as well, Nick Dvorak, who spoke here last year. Um, and there's a whole team of people behind the scenes like Wayne Abler who are making the video and the live streaming and the Wi-Fi possible as well. <laughs> uh, we had sponsors who really supported us financially too, so I, I do need to thank them. Um, the Plum Foundation supported us greatly. Um, we had a lot of help also from the Office of the Provost at the University. Um, so as you can imagine, a lot of the work that we've done here has been on the academic side of, 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 of the University, and so we were supported by our Provost. Uh, we also thank Six Feet Up and Wildcard for being such great participants in the planning process and for their help in sponsoring financially and with their time. Last year at Plone Symposium 2014, we had the privilege of hosting a strategic sprint at the beginning of the event that, um, that included, among other things, um, a negotiation of the features that would go into Plone 5. Hey, Rob. He Thanks, Rob. Hey. Rob Porter, part of our planning team. <laughs> I guess the taxi service worked for you. Uh, so last year, part of the symposium's pre-sprint was, um, uh, among other things, a negotiation of the features that would go into Plone 5 um, and of the features that would come out of Plone. And so this year, I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that after 
uh, a year and in, in, in particular six months of frenzied activity at various sprints around the world, um, we, are, we have witnessed the creation of Plone version 5, which we will see up close shortly with uh, Eric Steele. So I'm, I'm, it's been very exciting to watch this develop over the past year. Um, I mentioned that uh, some, of, some of you had, had travel challenges getting here. Um, I, I did want to raise something that's been in the back of, of hi, Chris Calloway. <laughs> that's been in the back of, um, back of my mind for a while, which is that um, Plon is facing some challenges on a number of fronts, and I'd like to use this event to draw some of the wisdom out from you, um, some of your best ideas on what we could do going forward. And uh, some of the things, some of the fronts that I see Plone facing some challenges on are um, its marketing and visibility, um, among some things, coalescing around a feature roadmap, which I think um, a number of us have had discussions about uh, what's happening with the uh, Deco idea and the different products that are out there to create versions of Deco. Um, and to some extent, the mindshare of competing web technologies and how those affect Plone and how we can uh, coexist with those other web technologies, uh, some of which are related to Plone, like Pyramid, uh, but it's been an interesting um, increase in the number of technologies that are out there, whereas Plone 10 years ago was pretty much the only thing out there in the open source world. Um, and the other thing that I really, on a more positive note really, is now that we've gotten to the point where we're about to see Plone 5 released, um, I wanted to ask you, what do you see as being in Plone 6? So to that, to that end, uh, there will be a working lunch. <laughs> so you're not just going to be able to relax at lunch. We're going to have some questions for you at each table, and we're going to ask you to put your heads together at your table and come up with some answers for a couple of questions. And then we'll, we'll report back to you, and then we'll incorporate that as feedback to the general Plone community. I have a couple of housekeeping things I want to mention. Uh, hopefully you have been able to get on the Wi-Fi. Uh, passwords in the SSID are listed on, in this room and next door where the other talk stream will be. Um, if you're going to be tweeting, hopefully you know that uh, please use the hashtag PSM14. If you post photos on Flickr, please post them with that tag PSM14 as well. Um, parking in case uh, hopefully we won't have any parking issues this year. I know this is not very exciting. Uh, parking, we uh, paid protection money to the parking office <laughs> this year. And so uh, if you're parking near uh, adjacent to Sage or um, in lot 15, which is across from uh, Horizon, you should not get any parking tickets, although we had gotten two already. Uh, let any of us know and we'll, we'll get them nullified with extreme prejudice. The um, other thing you can do to save yourselves, hopefully, some grief is get something with the word Plone on your dashboard, and uh, that should ward off the evil parking people. I hope they're not watching. They have a Plone site, by the way, so. <laughs> um, the recreation passes that you will have gotten in your, uh, in your bag, uh, those, please, if you, you need to use one of those every day, you use the facility. If you need more, the uh, ladies at the registration desk have more, and you can come ask us for more over the next few days as well. Um, and I do recommend, I mean, you, you do need to see the, the Student Rec and Wellness Center. It's a wonderful facility, and if you swim, the Albi pool is a wonderful uh, pool as well. We will have Kieran Lowenstein. Could you please stand up, Kieran? Um, Kieran is a high school student, and she did a great job video interviewing students during the referendum campaign that occurred here in the spring for the Oshkosh schools. And we were successful with the campaign in large part because of the work that Kieran did uh, videotaping um, students in her high school, uh, in her school, asking them about what they felt was important about their school and, and what it brought to them. And we thought it'd be a great idea if Kieran would do that for us. So you'll see her wandering around taking a lot of video and she'll be uh, trying to snare a number of you to ask a number of questions on camera. If you'd be willing to do that, that'd be wonderful and we'll edit those down and Kieran will post them. 
One note about the symposium here, one of the, the in 20, sorry, I'm losing the year. In 2012, in, in uh, 2012 at Penn State, uh, Mike Hom, who was the director of WebLion at Penn State, had asked if his vision was that the Plone Symposium would cycle through different venues every couple of years. And so I was eager to host the symposium here. And so we've done it for two years and we are looking for the next venue. So for 2015, for PSM 15, if any of you are interested in hosting the symposium, please think about it. And over the next couple of days, please, please come talk to me. Um, there's a lot of work that we've got that's in our base camp. We use, we've used Basecamp, we've used um, a lot of Google Docs. There's a lot of information and knowledge that we are prepared to pass on if you're interested in hosting the symposium next year. A couple of notes about our schedule. Um, as you know, tomorrow, uh, Brian Silverman, who is the founder of Logo Computer Systems, will be here to speak in the morning. And Steve McMahon, who's Plone Foundation board member and longtime Plone contributor, will be speaking in the afternoon. Um, and the theme of their talks is going to be open source, but from a couple of different perspectives. Uh, Brian Silverman hired me when I was 17, and, uh, and uh, I guess that changed his life, uh, possibly for the worse. But uh, he decided, uh, f maybe not for that reason, not to be an open source developer, and so he'll talk about why he made that choice. And Steve McMahon, as many of you know, is a, has a PhD in sociology, and so he's going to be looking at what makes open source communities tick, uh, which I hope is of interest to you. So that will be tomorrow. Um, each day after lunch, we will have about 30 minutes of lightning talks. And so hopefully you know that lightning talks are limited to five minutes and you can talk about anything you like. You can do a song and dance number as I'm sure Luke will be doing. And uh, you can show anything you want. And so five minutes later, the cowbell will ring. So if you want to sign up for lightning talks, please sign up on the whiteboard over here. We also will be having dinners uh, at about six o'clock tonight at Mahoney's, which is very close to the bridge uh, if you go that way, <laughs> which helps the people watching this online. <laughs> Sorry? Save for, crepes. for crepes. Ah, we should get you on the schedule, yes. <laughs> so there will save, uh, Calvin is saying save room for crepes, which will be in Horizon Village? Yeah, fourth floor. Fourth floor of Horizon <laughs> Village. So sometime after dinner, yeah. any time in particular you're thinking of? So around midnight, <laughs> as soon as we get back from dinner. So no, it's probably 8.30, 9 o'clock, something like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, also a note about the schedule, sprints and birds of a feather, we will be having sprints on um, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you have sprint topics that you'd like to have uh, other people join in on and you want to talk about them early or uh, you can edit the page if you go to the symposium website the sprints page there's a topics page you can edit and please list your sprint topics there if you've got a bird of a feather session that you'd like to gather a group around to discuss a topic of interest you can list your um, list your topic on that page as well um, in fact we can also put some space on the board um, here too so that's for sprints and birds of a feather. And with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. Eric Steele, Plone Release Manager. Okay, so my, yeah, my mic's on, great. Um, so yeah, like Kim said, I'm Eric Steele, I'm the Plone Release Manager, um, and I wanted to talk to you about Plone 5. Uh, so as he said last year, we came here uh, before the sprints, or before the, we had sprints before the uh, event, and uh, sat down and started talking about all the things we had going. Um, and we're 
slowly realized that we had quite a few things that were actually pretty close to being done uh, that really made it worth uh, looking at making a new uh, Plone release. Um, so uh, I wanted to give you a quick overview of um, what we've been working on over the last year um, and where things are and what you, what you can expect out of it. Um, there's a really big um, asterisk. Um, <laughs> this is alpha, level, alpha quality software, so there are bugs, um, many of which I had to stop and fix while I was working on the, the presentation. Um, so <laughs> it was a little um, distracting. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we've been working on, we've been having sprints all year. Um, this was in uh, uh, Brazil. Um, there was quite a bit of other things going on, but the, uh, the kids had their own sprint going, happening. Um, we've, I forgot to take a count, but we've had six to eight already this year, um, and we have quite a few more in the works. Um, and it's covered all kinds of topics from uh, from the UI to uh, DECA replacement to uh, documentation to testing, um, and it's, it's been fantastic to watch. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today is um, really what Plone is trying to do to make your life easier. Um, I know there's always this um, feeling of the developers are out there to just completely make my life horrible. Um, and we really are trying to improve things, um, and, but we just do a very bad job of actually telling you what we've done. Um, and so part of the reason I want to show you this early, uh, these early uh, bits of Plone is so that I can get feedback from you um, and find out where we're doing things correctly, where we're completely off, um, because we need that feedback. Otherwise, we can't make those changes to make Plone easier for you. Um, I want to touch on four different uh, areas that we've been working on, the um, customization of the site, uh, content management, uh, developing add-ons for Plone, um, and the documentation. So uh, the first would be site customization. Um, and so we're getting rid of Plone Theme Classic, uh, first of all, um, because it's ancient and looks ancient, and we just don't want to maintain it anymore. Um, it will still exist as, as a theme. You can add it to your build out if you really want it for some reason. Um, and we're getting rid of presentation mode because it's, you know, um, but once again, that's, <laughs> that's its own package now if you really want it. Um, but we figured there are so many more. Uh, that was written eight years ago, I think, and JavaScript has progressed a bit since then. Um, so we're, starting with a, uh, an unthemed look. So um, if you look at Plone without any theme, it's just a very purple and blue uh, set of lists and uh, H1 tags. Um, we're, we're setting up a, uh, a very unthemed look. Uh, so it's got a very basic CSS applied um, just to give you a uh, basis to, do, uh, to work with the Diazo. Um, we're really going all in on Diazo um, as our theming uh, story. So we want to give you something that has, uh, sorry, uh, so the pre-Diazo pre page. So, this, so what you would actually be modifying for your uh, new theme. Um, so we're giving it more selectors uh, and so that you can more accurately uh, make changes with your Diazo rules. Uh, much cleaner HTML. It's going to be HTML5. Um, we're, we got rid of the base tag. Um, which caused a lot of problems for people. Uh, we got rid of all the layout tables, uh, and we've cleaned up the portlets, so we don't have those horrible uh, definition lists in there anymore. Um, so this is over here. This is what um, this is what the uh, uh, example portlet code would look like. Um, and as we've been doing this, we've been running this through Paul and the accessibility team as um, constantly, just to try to get more feedback and make sure that. Everything we do is done with a focus on accessibility. So we want to make sure that as you build your site, if, if, it's, if your site is going to be not accessible, it's your fault, um, because we're doing everything we can to make it as accessible as possible. Um, and we want to make sure that you can choose your own front end framework. So something like Bootstrap or Foundation. Um, out of the box, Plone is going to be uh, agnostic in that, in that respect. Um, the base, the Default theme will use uh, its own, but um, if you want to add your own 
foundation bootstrap or whatever, uh, that's entirely your call. And we got rid of the deco grid system, which just didn't work for quite a few use cases. Um, so one of the big things we've added um, because of Diazo is the toolbar. Um, and this is a mock-up of it um, that Albert Casado has been working on. So we've taken everything from the green bar we're all familiar with and the personal tools bar and move them into one, uh, into one toolbar. So this will sit off to the, to the left side uh, and provide um, the ability to do all the content and site management tasks that you would, would need to do. Um, and this will stay outside of the, of the theme so that when you're, when you're uh, skinning your site, it's not actually going to interfere with the uh, toolbar. And so it can also live at the top of the screen uh, if you want. Uh, there, there are several different options that are all controlled by uh, HTML class attributes. So you can stick it at the top or the bottom, whether it's compressed by default or not. Um, and uh, we've tested this across mobile so that we make sure that it works on an iPhone, an iPad, whatever phone or tablet you have. Um, so I mentioned Albert. Uh, he's been working on a theme called Barceloneta. Um, <laughs> Uh, and this is the, uh, the beach it's named after in uh, Barcelona. Um, and so this is going to be the, de uh, the default theme for your plone site. Um, excuse me. <laughs> um, always remember to turn your phone off because I completely, what was I talking about? <laughs> the theme, okay. I, I should admit that by looking up here. Um, <laughs> So, all right, out of the box, he's, we're making sure it's responsive. Um, he's using less for the CSS, um, so we've got variables, um, extendable, and all that. Uh, we want to make sure it's something that you can copy and edit through the web. Um, so using the, through using Plone's Diazo theme editor, you can make changes to this uh, however you'd like. Um, so just some examples of some of the content in here. Um, so these would be the alerts, um, the breadcrumbs, uh, forms, portlets, uh, so we have the login portlet, the news portlet, the calendar portlet, which I absolutely love, um, and the navigation portlet. Um, so um, Albert's been working on this as part of his um, Google Summer of Code project. Um, he was working on this previous to that, but um, is actually going to get a bit of money from Google for doing it now, so it's a great <laughs> Great setup for him. Uh, if you go to this uh, website here, um, uh, he's um, keeping track of everything he's doing as he goes, um, and it's pretty fascinating to watch. He's about three weeks in and has all that done already um, and has a team of people who are just implementing, his, uh, implementing it as fast as they can. So, and once again, all these, uh, all these elements have been run through uh, accessibility tests uh, as we go. Um, so we're simplifying templating a bit. Um, this is a benefit of uh, switching to the uh, Chameleon rendering engine. Um, it's, we're mainly switching because it renders your pages about 20% faster, um, which is always a nice thing. Um, but it gives us this uh, string substitution syntax that looks like this. Um, so up top is uh, what we typically write, so using the tau attributes and tau content. Um, and below, we can use this uh, dollar sign and curly braces format to actually make calls to variables. Um, so we can just stick those right in line, um, and it makes for a much cleaner uh, read to the page. And the other nice uh, feature of that is we actually can stick the bug prompt in your template um, to see what variables are set up uh, and <laughs> what values there are. Um, it's very fun to play with. I recommend it. Um, this is a picture of Ramon with an accordion. Um, <laughs> sorry, I love that picture. Um, this, this is uh, from last, last week, I believe, at the uh, Mosaic Sprint. Um, as um, Kim said, there are several competing uh, attempts at finally getting Deco right. Um, Deco is our layout editor that we've been trying to build for years. It's had um, quite a few different um, incarnations and champions, and we've never quite felt that we have it right. Um, so we've had things like Collective Cover that have come out, 
um, as a, a, an attempt to make that work. Um, there's now Mosaic, which is similar, but it's much closer to the original vision. Um, so uh, things are progressing on that front. Um, we always get asked about it. It's <laughs> nothing has hindered clone development more than Deco um, <laughs> because we all want it and we're all trying to get there. Um, so there, there is uh, quite a bit of movement in that, in that regard. Um, I think we'll see several add-ons uh, in that space uh, for the next few years. Uh, and then Plone 6 will probably include the winner from that. Um, my favorite feature in Plone 5 is the date formatting. Um, it's, it's such a, um, it looks like such a trivial little thing, but it's actually, um, I remember Hanno telling me that the date formatting was actually one of the biggest um, hindrances to uh, performance on a Plone site. So uh, looking at folder contents, processing 20 uh, date time strings uh, to make them uh, all use the same format. So what we're doing is we're handling that on the client side now. Uh, it's using a pro uh, package called uh, moment.js. Um, so all those are, we're, Plone is just spitting out a straight date time string and uh, the JavaScript is handling the, the rendering. So we get things like uh, internationalization out of the box. So um, whatever your standard local time format would look like, uh, it'll use that uh, and it updates live, um, which is really more a, uh, an aspect of the fuzzy times. Um, so we can, we can do straight date time strings um, or we can do these fuzzy times so like a few minutes ago, yesterday, uh, next month, or last Tuesday at 3.15 p.m. Um, and we can format those on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, this is what the, uh, the settings for that, that would look like. We have this, uh, this data attribute here that um, lets us um, define the uh, formatting of that. Um, I remember, I think it was, it was Chris, I think, that had the massive issues trying to reformat the, uh, the, date, the default date times on his site. Um, so we're doing our best to make that a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to write a whole package just to uh, make that change. Uh, one of the things we worked on at the Emerald Sprint was uh, new security setups. Um, this is just a mock-up at this point, but it's something I'd really love to see us do. Um, taking uh, the, all the security settings and hiding them behind just a few buttons. Um, so building uh, the different, so it's very similar to Internet Explorer's traffic light, and I hate to take anything from Internet Explorer, but <laughs> that's something that actually makes a little bit of sense. Um, so allowing you to say, choose which level of security you want on your site, a completely open, very closed, or um, just in between, uh, and letting you choose one of those three, it'll set, say, 20 different um, settings throughout your site, and you can go in and make changes to individual uh, settings after that, um, but it, takes care of the bulk of the work for you. Um, one of the massive things uh, that we've wanted for years is easier ability to edit uh, the membership form. Um, so this is using the uh, Dexterity Schema Editor uh, to um, modify the registration form. So we're able to go in and add new fields, rearrange them, hide, hide them, um, and it makes it so much easier to actually uh, to take care of that. Um, so, we're a content management system. Um, we really need to spend a lot more time worrying about how we actually manage content. Um, as, or as developers, we need to spend a lot more time worrying about that. Um, the f big thing we've changed here is the editor. Um, so, we've updated to the new Tiny MCE 4. Um, it's a much cleaner integration this time. So, we have a lot less uh, overhead. We have the ability to actually keep up to date with Tiny MCE now. Um, and so they've really changed the, uh, the layout, made it a lot cleaner. Um, you can see the styles in line as you go through the menus. Uh, it's had some accessibility changes made um, so that it works better in that respect. It's fully mobile, um, so you can edit your site via your phone or your tablets or your computer. Um, we're using the, their built-in image, uh, image forms. 
So we can quickly add images that way. Uh, and the other way we can do that is actually just by dragging and dropping. There we go. So we can drag our image in, and there it is. Uh, and this is something that Nathan worked on last year, and it's fantastic. Um, one, of the, one of the other things we get is the ability to um, add some accessibility checks. Um, so Paul's been working on this. Uh, TinyMC already handled spell checking. Uh, that's something you can enable. Uh, we're looking at enabling uh, some content checks by default. Uh, so requiring alt tags for uh, images, uh, requiring title attributes for your links. Uh, and we can even have it look for complex sentences to, uh, to uh, handle to make it easier for people with cognitive disabilities to uh, read your content. Um, so this is something that you can enable to uh, enforce uh, rules for your, your content editors. Uh, we've made changes to the tagging. Uh, so we can do uh, a search and uh, find, or we can search for, for tags uh, and add them that way. We can rearrange and delete them. Uh, the related content widget has uh, improved quite a bit. It has searching abilities. We can uh, navigate into folders, choose several items, uh, and again, choose uh, the ordering. So this is another big one, the folder contents. Uh, this is largely the work of the wildcard group. Um, and we thank them so much for it. Um, this, is, this is great. Um, so, managing a lot of items in a folder has always been pretty tricky. Um, so from the new view, you can actually go in and uh, make changes to individual items. You can uh, add new content. Uh, we can change the, uh, yeah, change the columns displayed, the order uh, online. Uh, and drag and drop actually works now. <laughs> so if we select a few items, we can actually uh, modify our selection using a filter. Uh, we can then do the standard cut, copy, paste. Uh, but the neat thing over here is um, uh, a bulk uh, edits. Uh, so we can change the workflow of multiple items at once. We can change the tags of multiple items at once. So we can go in and add a tag. Uh, and then you'll see it shows up uh, right over here. Uh, we can change the publication date and all sorts of things. Uh, we can even rename uh, multiple items at once. Let me see if I can fast forward this. Um, and then the other great thing is that we can actually, I must have missed it, we can actually uh, drag and drop new uh, files. So we can pull in, select uh, 10 images from our desktop and just drag them right into the folder and it will upload them automatically. Uh, so all these are coming, all these widgets are coming from the mockup project. Um, it's uh, been working pretty well for us. Um, so these are actually, actually, uh, content agnostic uh, uh, widgets. Uh, they basically allow us to apply them to uh, dexterity, to archetypes, to your just straight up forms. We can use them in pyramid, uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, so I urge you to check out the, uh, the, the URL there. Um, there's a number of examples of all of these um, and pretty good documentation about how, uh, how customization works. Um, so, we're moving to dexterity as our base content type um, framework. Uh, so, we're still going to ship with archetypes, but we're not going to enable it by default. If you have, if you're migrating a site, it's, it'll stick with archetypes and you can install the uh, dexterity types on your own. Um, so, we have direct replacements for all the existing types, but using dexterity, so they're going to be much smaller memory footprint. Uh, you'll be able to go through and add behaviors so you can add new functionality to existing types uh, quite quickly. Uh, and then you can go in and add and 
change fields as you need. Uh, the warning, so I said they're all uh, direct analogs to the archetypes with one, ex uh, one, one um, exclusion, uh, and that's events. Um, this is something we've been trying to do for years, uh, and we finally got it right, uh, and that is uh, the PloneApp event package. Um, so we can now go in, and we have a lot of the same features, um, but we've added time zone support. Um, you can now just have an all-day event. Um, you can have uh, an open-ended event, so it just starts and doesn't have an actual end. So if I go in and say set up a staff lunch, uh, we'll select the times, and then what I can do is actually add recurrence to it. Um, so we can go in and say, let's make this every Tuesday and Thursday uh, until the end of September. And we can say, have it go for four times, or we can set an end date. Uh, so when I save that, we're gonna see that there are actually, it's gonna show all the uh, instances uh, for that. So we'll have our event page, but then we'll see uh, all the times it's actually happening. Uh, when I view the uh, See More Occurrences link, um, we're gonna get a calendar view that obviously needs a little bit of work yet, but um, we can see all the upcoming events for the next, or all the future events, all the events for the month. Um, we can move to the next month. We can view by week or by day. Um, so it just gives you a nice agenda view. And, uh, and then all of those will, of course, show up in the, uh, the new calendar portlet. So. Um, Philip Bauer has been just working like crazy to make changes. Uh, he wants to make sure that the, the migration process is, is as clean as possible. Um, so he's actually made migration for your existing archetypes types. Um, so for the stock types, we go type by type and bring things from archetypes into, uh, into the new dexterity types. Um, and so you can do that one by one. So if you wanna keep your old page, uh, page archetypes types, uh, you can do that and move everything else. Um, and we're working on uh, actually making that work for custom types as well. So you create the um, analog of the existing type in dexterity. Uh, you can then use the form to uh, map types from the one to the other um, and just pull it all over. Um, so th I think that's gonna make everybody's life quite a bit easier. Um, as far as add-on development goes, um, we, I need to yell at Nate's for, to actually get a plip in, but we wanna ship with Plone API. Um, one of the big issues uh, with developing uh, with Plone is remembering where all this stuff comes from and uh, handling change when it happens. Um, so we want to get as much as possible into this one namespace um, so that you can manage your site without uh, having a break when we move to the next version of Plone. So uh, here's an example of uh, getting the current user. So at the top is the Plone API way, and at the bottom is the uh, existing way. So you need to remember all the steps to jump through. It's, it's not a huge change um, as far as lines of code, but I can never remember how managed cut objects is uh, underscored and capitalized. Um, and I, I never remember to put the, the square brackets in, so it's always looking for um, 12 different types, each with a letter name. Um, so, so we're just trying to make things easier, make uh, everything come from one namespace, um, and reduce the cognitive overhead of having to remember where all this comes from. Um, Documentation is very good. Um, it's at api.plone.org now, um, and so it, it's narrative. Uh, so we get this really nice um, uh, story, essentially uh, showing exactly what you're trying to do and the uh, and the call needed to do it. Um, I really suggest that everybody start using this. Uh, it works in Plone 4, uh, and I, I think it's just going to be uh, game changing for us. Uh, we added the configuration registry in Plone 4.1, um, but we're in Plone 5, we're gonna move everything into it. Um, so we wanna get rid of all the portal tools we use, um, portal properties um, and the, well, there's portal properties and then there's the properties of the portal. Um, you can never remember exactly where things are. So everything's gonna go in here. Um, it's, a, 
if you've used Mozilla's about config, it's very similar to that. So you can filter and uh, find uh, settings via that. Um, click on them, make the change. It'll highlight which, uh, which values you've actually made changes to. Um, and so once again, using Plone API, we just do this instead of finding the tool and getting the traversing to the sub uh, the sub uh, properties form and getting the, the value. We just call this get registry record with the name and get the value back. Um, we're making some big changes to security. Uh, again, this is something Nathan has worked on. Uh, he's been doing quite a bit for us. Um, we've added auto automated uh, cross site request forgery uh, protection and click jacking protection. So basically, uh, and, and auto rotating key rings. So basically, what we're doing is making sure that all your add ons are just as secure as core clone. It's gonna prevent you, it's gonna prevent those add-ons from actually making, change, making writes to the database if um, it's not done the correct way. So uh, that's big for us. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on is documentation. Um, so uh, there was back in February, I believe, uh, Sven had a uh, sprint uh, in Amsterdam uh, where they spent quite a bit of time reworking our documentation. Um, and <laughs> uh, it was hugely productive. We, had, we actually found out we have over 2,000 pages worth of documentation that's end user, that's um, developer, that's integrator level uh, stuff. Uh, and the great thing is that it's actually, we've started generating automated screenshots for it um, so that as we change Plone, the screenshots and the documentation are updated. And then you can actually take that and rerun it using your site um, theme so that when your end users are looking at the documentation, it looks exactly like your site for them, um, which I just love. Um, and then the other thing is it's gonna be fully uh, translatable. So we already have people working on TransFX to uh, translate it to Italian, to Spanish, uh, German, I think is the other one. Uh, and we just wanna get it out there for as many people as possible. And the big thing for Plone 5 is that we're actually branching it. So the, everything that was valid in Plone 4 stays with Plone 4, and as we make the changes for Plone 5, they go into the new documentation, and you are pretty sure that uh, what we have is actually applicable, applicable to your site. Uh, so that's all I have for today. Um, we have a pre-release out, Alpha 2. I'm working on Alpha 3 now. Um, so if you go to plone.org slash try5, um, it'll take you to the downloads page. Um, please give it a shot. Um, we really want to get any feedback we can from you. The other thing we're going to do is in Plone 3.4, um, there are quite a few uh, of these packages. So Dexterity, the Plone app content types, um, the widgets, Plone app events, and one other that I'm blanking on. Uh, that are actually very usable in Plone 4, uh, Plone 4.3. So in, in the next release of Plone 4.3, we're gonna actually add uh, version pins for that. We won't install, we won't add them to your build out by default, but if you want to install them and use them, uh, it uh, allows you to actually do that without worrying about it um, grabbing the Plone 5 versions. Um, so we wanna get those out there as soon as possible to get um, everybody using them, find where the bugs are, find where the uh, the integration headaches are so that we can iron those out as soon as possible. Okay? Thank you. Any questions? Sorry. Uh, Actually, sorry, for, for questions, if you don't mind, sure. um, I can walk to you or if you... Actually, no, I've got the microphone. Uh, Chris asked where the URL is, so it's just uh, over here, plone.org slash try-5. Or maybe, uh, Eric, if you can repeat the question. Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, on the content management end, history, it seems to be a big deal for my team. We have people who accidentally delete stuff, mm -hmm. and we don't find it for three or four months. Is that going to continue to be in the next release? Yes, yes, that is in there. Um, and so there's, uh, as part of Dexterity, there's a versioning behavior that you can apply or remove uh, per content type as you like. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention about Dexterity is that um, uh, we have a new multilingual support for it uh, that will cover um, Dexterity types um, and archetypes as well, I believe. So. Eric, I, I did have a question, which is um, you mentioned that uh, 
Albert was working on the theming, mm -hmm. and you mentioned Google. How? What was the story behind that? Uh, he uh, so uh, the, yeah. Uh, Albert is working on the theme. Uh, he's he was working on the theme before, uh, but he managed to get to roll that into a Google Summer of Code project. So he's getting paid by Google to to work on it for us. Any other questions? Uh, I guess uh, I, I would just comment on, I'm, I'm really blown away by all the things that you've put into Pwn5 because I remember hearing about them and, and being in the room when you were talking about them, but I mean, you've just, the, the look of it and the toolbar, it just looks wonderful. And, and the thinking that you've put into allowing people to swap in Bootstrap or Foundation, because I know over a couple of projects we've switched those different um, bases, and, and it's nice to know that, that we have that option to make it even easier to do. Right, I mean, I know I, know I was uh, bit by the uh, Deco grid system, um, just not being really uh, responsive and causing some issues in that way. So we wanted to try to make it as agnostic as possible. Anybody else have any questions? Have you have you tried Plone Five yet? Because I know the build out was made available a few weeks ago. No, nobody's tried it. Well, this is a great opportunity. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, All right. Um, unless there are other questions, thank you very much to Eric. <laughs>